Brendan Cronenberg, the son of David Cronenberg, the infamous and legendary horror director who's been killing it for years and years, has burst on the scene with his movie Antiviral and then became almost like a close to a household name with Possessor, putting him on the radar of many horror movie fans. Me, who's getting more into these kind of movies, have never seen any of the Cronenberg's work before, but was thinking about diving deep into it and seeing what this depraved, gory, but something that talks about the human condition kind of movies that they make was all about. So I was super duper excited to see this bonkers trailer per Infinity Pool when it first came out. Seeing it starring one of my favorite actresses right now, a dynamic horror queen that she's turning into, Mia Goth, and Alex Gale Skarsgård, who's always really good or great or even stellar in films that he is in. Is this movie an infinite ideas of genius or a shallow pool? That's what I'll discuss when I break down the good and the bad of Infinity Pool. Let's start with the premise. Guided by a seductive and mysterious woman played by Mia Goth, a couple on vacation venture outside the resort's grounds and finds themselves in a culture filled with violence, hedonism, and untold horror. A tragic accident soon leaves them facing a zero tons policy for a crime. Either you'll be executed, or if you're rich enough to afford it, you can watch yourself die instead. Infinity Pool is rated R for graphic violence, disturbing material, strong sexual content, graphic nudity, drug use, and some language. Mia Goff completely steals the show as Gabby, a manic pixie fangirl who's obsessed with James, played by Alexander Skarsgård because of a book that he wrote six years prior. She starts as this flirtatious, sweet fangirl and slowly evolves into this psychotic seductress. And Mia Goth plays in that really, really well. Think how her like extended performance in Pearl and X, and she brings it up to another level here. She has so much fun doing this role with accents and different facial expressions. If you saw the trailer, that crazy looking scene that she had in the trailer where she's holding the gun and that laugh she does, she had a blast in this role. My favorite part of the performance, she goes from this soft, seductive, sexy hedonism to swiftly go into this psychotic, tough, and bone-chilling performance that she has that really keeps you mesmerized throughout the film. Alexander Skarsgård plays James, a writer who is struggling to get inspiration for his next book, so he decides to go to a resort on this local small island that not a lot of people go to. It's, it's, it's made up for this particular movie. He brings his wife, played by Cleopatra Coleman, Earn, and they're both there. And you can see the awkward tension between them from the beginning. She's a rich, wealthy woman who come comments on how she mar he married rich and how she's he's kind of bleeding her for money because he hasn't come up with any other ideas. He's instantly mesmerized by Mia Goff's Gabby, who brings her own partner along and they rope them in into coming on this adventure with them where they venture outside of the grounds of the place that they're staying at, which which is a no-no on this island. An accident happens and they and on the this island the any crime is can lead to death. But if you are famous or from America and have some money and can pay for it, they can do something where they kind of clone you. You can watch your double die instead. As the movie progresses, we see that the themes of the wealthy and the rich and the entitled, when they're left unchecked, no one's stopping them and they're given into their primal urges, doing crime after crime, different acts that are at the Bethesda of the Taurus and the locals and just taking advantage of everything that is there in the resources and doing everything they can there that they know they can get away with. They engage in hedonistic, psychosexual, and sadistic pleasures all while using the locals, plants, and religion as a basis to get off on what they want to do. Cronenberg films all this really, really well in this psychedelic versus like real-life nature feeling. He, everything is trippy like you're on acid while watching the movie while also on the other side of it he really puts a focus on nature and how this bringing out their animal animalistic side their bodily fluids being used which is i think is a sign of the cornerbergs that i've heard that they use a lot of blue they use a lot of bodily fluids blood sweat spit throw up everything has this focus on and has a juxtaposition with nature and how slowly if you let people just do what they want they start becoming like the animals that they hunt 
film is visually stunning with the cinematography highlighting the nature, like I said before, that's a big part of the film. Highlighting the nature, the rain, the the heat, the sexuality of all the characters, the way the sweat glistens off their bodies. The lighting really makes, especially Mia Goth, look really desirable and sexual. And that's a lot of a big part of this film and the themes just given into those inner urges and desires and letting yourself go because no one can stop you. Backed by a solid score, nothing amazing. The music here does the job and, and, and really sets you in the mood. And the mood is set off right from the beginning, whereas everything feels awkward and tense and something just feels completely off from the beginning, from the relationship between Erm and James. And it just progresses. It gets more intense, more awkward, more uncomfortable as the movie progresses. Now let's talk about the bad. While Infinity Pool succeeds visually and has a great performance by Mia Goth, I think that the story is really paper thin and shallow. It has a lot of the themes that I talked about in the good section, but they don't really dwell too deep in what those things mean, how it affects the island. We don't really get to see the islanders that much, and they're kind of just a footnote, which I may be a commentary, but the movie doesn't dwell enough on it. It focuses so much on the hedonism and the sexual parts of the film, like a, there's an orgy in the film that lasts like almost 10 minutes, and for a lot of people, that's going to be great. But if you're looking for something more meaty on the story and more thrills, you're not going to find it there. And outside of Gabby, played by Mia Goff, most of the characters are not really given much to do. They're just there to, for this plot, the service of the plot, and don't have like much personality or anything to do. And that's really weird because Alex and Scars are the other star of this film is usually really stellar in all the movies I've seen in. But for this movie, he felt like he was confused most of the time or looked like he was constipated. I don't know what direction Cronenberg gave him, but it wasn't a dynamic performance that I, I was suspecting from him. The movie is violent, depraved, psychedelic, and has shock sometimes for shock's sake that never got to the point that I thought it was. Remember, I'd never seen a Cronenberg movie before, but the way that their movies are hyped and talked about, I thought this was going to be something buck wild and crazy, really gory, really hypersexual, with a really great message about how those things affect us and the way it affects how we interact with each other. Is a th th Those things are there, but it's not deep. It really runs shallow and gets really muddled by this focus on the relationship between Alexander Skarsgård's James and Mia Goss Gabby with an ending that really doesn't land really strong and doesn't really serve like what's the real message of this film I don't really get that at the end of the day with that ending it was really really soft and I, it really left me feeling empty inside after watching the film bring down my verdict in two parts who is this for and you should watch it now or and my overall feelings who is this for if you're a fan of other Cronenberg films I'm pretty sure you're gonna find a lot here maybe there's things that I missed and I didn't get throughout the film but just based on first watch so you may understand it be based on prior films and if you are a fan of white lotus but something that's a little bit more grungy a little bit more like you're on acid while watching it a little something a little bit more sexual and violent you will like this film if you're looking for something a little bit more deeper something that a little bit more scary because this is a horror film and there are some horrific things done but it, there's no scares and the idea of what's happening is not that scary because it's something that we think rich entitled people already do how i feel overall i like the idea of the film more than i actually like the actual film itself it's really well made, some really great camera work and direction, and it has an outstanding performance by Mia Goff in a film that may be worth watching alone, but I think that the film's plot and story and the character arc of the main, main character feels directionless and a little bit pointless because I don't think that the themes and the, char and the, the characterizations really get deeper than it could. Like, I thought that everything felt a little bit surface level and shallow. Should you watch this right away, go run to the theater? For me, it's a no. If you're, like I said, if you're a Cronenberg fan, dude, this might be something that you need to get to see and watch right now. But if you're not familiar with their type of films, if you're queasy because of the body fluids, throw up spit and some sexual stuff and blood and gore, then this is not something you're going to want to ever watch. If you are not queasy like that, this is something you probably want to catch on streaming. But with that said, overall, I'm going to give 
this movie a D. Let me know in the comments below. Did you like it? Did you hate it? What would you rate Infinity Pool if you saw it? And based on my review, if you were trepid on watching the film, are you still going to check it out or are you going to pass it on by? Drop all those comments down below. Like the video if you like my review. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified of my reviews, reactions, rankings, and my live discussions. And you can watch more of my content right here.